As far as knowledge is concerned, it can broadly be classified into two categories. The first is the knowledge of the deen. The second is the worldly knowledge. As far as knowledge of the deen is concerned, the basic knowledge of the deen, it is compulsory upon every Muslim to acquire the basic knowledge of the deen. For example, the, regarding the five pillars of Islam, how to offer salah, regarding giving zakah, regarding fasting in the month of Ramadan, regarding hajj, regarding the six pillars of Iman, the basic teachings of Islam, it is compulsory upon every Muslim that he has knowledge regarding the basic teachings of Islam. Regarding additional things in Islam, for example, things that are mustahab or additional knowledge and information about Islam, it is recommended that we acquire this knowledge. For example, knowledge of tafsir, knowledge of hadith, in-depth knowledge of the glorious Quran, regarding fiqh, etc. And the first commandment given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was not to offer salah, it was not to give zakah, it was not to perform hajj, but it was iqra, read. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Alaq, chapter number 96, verse number 1, iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, read in the name of thy Lord who has created you. Abu Lord Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيضَةٌ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ Seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every single Muslim. It is compulsory upon every single Muslim to acquire education and knowledge, the, no the knowledge of the deen. So this is very important and it is compulsory for every Muslim to acquire knowledge. So as far as the knowledge of the deen is concerned, the first is the knowledge that is compulsory, the basic knowledge of Islam and also a Muslim should have knowledge of the things that are further than Islam and the things that are most of the things that are haram in Islam and also regarding the major sins in Islam so that he can abstain from it. The second type of knowledge in the Islamic knowledge it is the knowledge that is not compulsory for a Muslim to acquire, but it is mustahab, it is, it is recommended for a Muslim to acquire it. And this is the knowledge of the deen, the additional knowledge of the deen. For example, the things that are a sunnah in Islam, regarding the sunnah acts, regarding the sunnah fasts, regarding in-depth knowledge of the glorious Quran, regarding knowledge of fiqh, etc. The second type of knowledge, it is the knowledge of the dunya, the worldly knowledge. The worldly knowledge can be divided into two categories. The first is the worldly knowledge that draws you closer towards Islam, that draws you closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second is the worldly knowledge that draws you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The worldly knowledge that draws you closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, a person is studying science and the reason he's studying science is in order to do da'wah to the non-Muslims, so that he can do da'wah to the non-Muslims, so that he can convince the non-Muslims logically regarding the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, regarding the logical aspects in Islam. So inshallah, even though he's acquiring worldly knowledge, he will be rewarded in this situation. Whereas, at the same time, if a person, he is earning through the halal means, and he's not doing anything haram. So in this situation, he will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's not doing anything haram. The second type of worldly knowledge is the knowledge that takes you away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, a person, he's studying fortune telling. Fortune telling, it is prohibited in Islam. For example, a woman is learning how to model or how to dance. This is also prohibited for a woman because a woman, if she does modeling, dancing, so it breaks the criteria of hijab. She cannot maintain her hijab and modesty if she's, if she's dancing in front of other men, if she's modeling in front of other men. She will be unable to maintain her hijab and her modesty. So if the worldly knowledge, it draws us closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can very well acquire this knowledge. As far as philosophy is concerned, can we study philosophy? If we are studying philosophy and our intention is to dawa to non-Muslims, then in this situation we will be rewarded even for studying philosophy. 
if the philosophy that we are studying draws us closer towards the deen, then it is good to study philosophy. We will be rewarded for studying philosophy. But if we are studying philosophy and it takes us away from the deen, away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, away from the religion of Islam, so in this situation, we cannot study philosophy. And in this situation, we should not study philosophy. But generally, studying philosophy, as long as it is within the purview of the Islamic Sharia, it does not break any rule of the Islamic Sharia. There is no problem in studying philosophy as long as it does not take us away from the deen, away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I hope that answers your question.